Hi guys, <clears throat> Denali JB here. Uh, got my camo fly uh, hat on here for uh, smoking Grandpa Bones. He wears a lot of camo. I just watched one of his videos, so thought I'd put the tractor supply camo on. This episode I'm going to call Pipes, Knives, and Andy Griffith. Oldest pipe I have. This was uh, <clears throat> given to me <clears throat> for my grandpa when I was just a kid. So he he gave it to me as a toy, to play with. I guess I uh, would play with it at his house. So he gave it to me. My uh, grandpa. We called him Pappy. His last name was Dick. So we called him. Pappy Dick, and my grandma was Mammy, Mammy Dick. He was always Pappy Dick, Mammy Dick. Uh, he was born in 1882, so he was a uh, much different time when he was living. He died in uh, 1968, so I was 15 years old when he passed away. I can remember him smoking a pipe some, not a lot. Mostly he, uh, my memories of him was uh, chewing tobacco. He would chew the old plug type uh, tobacco. He'd take his knife out and slice off the uh, tobacco off that plug and sit there on the porch and chew it and spit in a coffee can. Uh, yeah, an old timer. But he gave me that. The uh, oldest pipe that I have that I bought when I was uh, of a uh, legal age to smoke. I bought this at a tinder box. This is probably 35 years old, 35 to 38 years old. It says it's a uh, Cesar uh, Imperial B. That's all I know. Of course, back then I knew nothing at all about pipes. Not that I know a whole lot now, but. Uh, so that was my first one. I don't know at the time, but of course it's got a lot of, you probably can't see, it's got a lot of sand pits on it. So it was a, I don't, had no idea how much I paid for it, but uh, I don't imagine it was too much. And my latest pipe, I'm not showing all my pipe, my newest pipe is, I've shown this before, is a Boswell's pipe that I got off of their, uh, web page uh, had to think about it one uh, Thursday morning get on pretty early and uh, was able to snag this pipe so that's my newest pipe of course there's a big difference in the although this I paid like 130 bucks that's that's the most I've ever paid for a pipe but a big difference between that and price and this price I'm sure so those are the pipes now the knives I've got two knives that I got from my other grandpa, and we called him Pawpaw. He was Pawpaw and uh, then Mama. This was a knife that uh, of his. He always called it his hawk, hawk build knife. You can see the the blade there is kind of a hook like a hawk, I guess. Just a a cheapy knife. I don't know. It's even got the little hole in there for a a lanyard or a ring or something. Of course, he never, this is always just carried in his pocket. Uh, like I said, it's just a cheapy knife, but <clears throat> my grandma uh, gave this to me uh, several years after he passed away. So that, uh, a lot of sentimental, sentimental value there. Uh, now this knife, this is a Boker Tree brand, little knife. He actually gave this to me uh, when I was probably somewhere between five and ten years old because I remember where we were living at when uh, I had the knife. Uh, this was not a new knife when he gave it to me. It has been uh, blades are getting very worn from a, a lot of sharpening. They were probably pretty much that way when it was give, gifted to me. Uh, 
at one time, like I lost this knife, and uh, I lost it in the yard. It was out in the grass. I can't remember how long it was there, but uh, I thought it was gone, and then I found it. So uh, that's why this. Imagine that's why this side is much darker than this side. So I, I don't remember. Like I said, I was place we lived at when we, we moved there when I was four and moved away when I was ten. And I remember losing in that yard. So that's been uh, over 50 years ago. So I don't know if this is, is lighter because of uh, if it was the sun or if it was because it was down on the dirt and the grass and stuff. But uh, he got these, I imagine both these knives, he got them and uh, he would go, when he'd go to town, he would uh, sit in front of the courthouse where my grandma was shopping and he'd sit there with the other old guys and they would uh, swap knives and watches so I'm, I'm sure he got both of these in a, in a swap with somebody so those are the knives pipes knives and now the Andy Griffith I'm a big Andy Griffith fan as uh, as are uh, many other people on YouTube here in the pipe community here some of them I know uh, Kevin, Louisiana Pipe Guy 1965, has talked about Andy Griffith and, uh, and Adam. And Adam, uh, I can't remember if there's some numbers after that, but Adam's a big fan too. But, uh, of course, I'm old enough to where uh, I watched Andy Griffith's show. I watched the original ones, you know, they weren't the repeats. And uh, when I would watch with my daughter, of course, the repeats, I would always tell her that uh, when she would see Opie, that that's how old I was at the time. I think uh, Ron Howard, of course, played Opie. He is about a month younger than I am. So I look back to those old shows and think, you know, that's how old I was. And there was an episode of the Andrew Griffith show called uh, Mayberry Goes Hollywood. And there was a, a Hollywood producer who came to Mayberry and he wanted to make a movie in Mayberry. Not about Mayberry, but I think in Mayberry. And he wanted to use, you know, a lot of the, the, as a backdrop, I guess, you know, the buildings. And, and there was a big oak tree at the, in the town square that he wanted to uh, include that in the, the movie. So everybody got the, got the Hollywood fever and they all started changing, you know, getting all dressed up. And uh, they were getting their Hollywood haircuts, you know, Floyd the Barber was given the uh, Cary Grant haircuts and stuff. But there were uh, two old guys when they, the, Andy took the producer around the first time to look at Mayberry for the first time. Uh, there were two old guys sitting on a bench, and uh, one had his overalls on, whereas my my grandpa wore overalls. But of course, they were overhauls. They would call them overhauls. Uh, my grandparents, both set of grandparents, were down and lived in Kentucky, Somerset, Kentucky, and. Uh, but they call them overhauls. And so the guy sitting there in his overhauls, you know, the guy had on a, it looked like a pair of jeans and flannel shirt or something. And the one guy is smoking a pipe and they're both got their knives out, whittling. And uh, like I said, when the, then the people started getting the Hollywood fever and they're getting all their fancy haircuts and, and stuff. And uh, the guy comes back through and there's those two old guys sitting on the bench but they got their, they got suits on, sitting there, still smoking a pipe and, and whittling. But they got suits on, so that's my uh, pipes, knives, and Andy Griffith. So uh, hope you found a little humor in this, because uh, I'm a big Andy Griffith fan. In fact, uh, for my uh, 50th birthday, my wife, uh, we went to uh, Mayberry, North Carolina. On Mayberry, it was they call it Mayberry. It's a Mount Airy, Mount Airy, North Carolina, which is the <clears throat> was where Andy Griffith was born. And every year they have a big deal there. It's you know two, three, four days. Uh, they have a some of the lot of some of the people that were on the show. Uh, of course, they're all uh, getting older now, and, and then they have a lot of people that are uh, like impersonators. They impersonate the, a lot of the characters, and it's a really good. Uh, they have shows you can go to a show and they have like a, a comedy show uh, 
when they uh, they have some, like I said, some of the real people there, and then the, the impersonators. And we went to a uh, well that year actually, Andrew Griffiths was there. Uh, the only time that he ever was ever there was the year we went, and uh, they had a uh, statue. He was dedicating a statue that uh, I think it was actually TV Land had had put up. It was a picture of. Uh, Andy and Opie with their fishing poles, like you see them at the beginning where they're walking down, you know, and they got their fishing poles with them. So uh, he was at the dedication. We got to see him there. And then we went to a show with uh, the Dillards. The Dillards are a bluegrass band. And uh, on the show, they were on the show, and they were actually the Darling, the Darling family. So uh, they were actually a bluegrass band. Of course, uh, Briscoe, the father, uh, you know, he was just an actor, and then the uh, uh, the Darlene that played the sister was an actor, but she was a pretty good singer. But the uh, we actually saw the the Dillards in concert, and uh, since then the guy that played uh, the bass uh, he always had a pipe. Uh, he has passed away, and then uh, the guy that played the banjo. He was one of the Dar he was one of the uh, Dillard brothers, uh, Doug Doug Dillard. He has passed away, so there's only two of those, two of those guys left. So I was glad we got to see them, and uh, the other one uh, played the guitar, Rodney Dillard. So he, Rodney and uh, Doug were actually uh, brothers, and they got that band together. So a uh, little Mayberry history there, maybe a little bit more than you wanted to know. It's a show I enjoy. Uh, I guess it, I think about, you know, brings back a lot of my childhood days and things. So that's my, uh, how I tie the knives, pipes, and Andy Griffith show together. All right. So I uh, hope you enjoyed this little episode, and we'll see you all later. Bye now.